With just a laptop camera and editing software, many people are traveling the world, making a living doing what they love, thanks to YouTube. For context, I've been a YouTuber now for nearly a decade and worked on multiple different channels. And this is exactly what I would do if I could go back in time to go from zero to fully monetize channel as easily as possible. I'll break this video into seven steps and to make things as actionable as possible, at the end of each step, I'll include some sort of practical exercise or framework that's gonna actually help you take that knowledge and execute it. And we're gonna start with a huge mistake I made for over a year on my first channel. I'd make videos about Minecraft, CSGO, Mountain Blades, Star Wars. And over the course of 65 different videos, I got about 150 subs, but that audience was very divided. Like 15% were there for my Minecraft videos, 20% were there for my CSGO videos, 10% were there for my Mountain Blade videos. And the trap I found myself in was it was really hard for me to build momentum and for the algorithm to figure out who to promote my videos to because my community was just so divided. Now, am I saying you should just pick one type of content and just post that? Well, if you've posted 10, 20, 30 videos on one topic and you've made those videos as good as they possibly can be, but they're still not getting views, well, you need to shift things up. Insert Einstein insanity quote here. But in general, when you start to see a little bit of success, you wanna focus in on just that, just like Learn by Leo here. You can see he's got over 80,000 subscribers from just five videos, but all five of those videos revolve around the same topic, which is essentially how to grow on YouTube. And so like I said, I wanna make this practical for you guys. And the litmus test you can use once you've picked your niche is every time you go to create a video, ask yourself, is this video going to attract people who would want to watch all of the other videos on my channel? But even if you pick the perfect niche, your videos can still flop. And one of the biggest reasons this happens is perfectly illustrated by, you guessed it, Mr. Beast. Now, if we look at Mr. Beast's channel, he's used the cheap versus expensive format many, many times it's become a series. But even though Mr. Beast is often heralded as this all-knowing YouTube genius, and don't get me wrong, he is a YouTube genius, he actually doesn't come up with a lot of his own ideas from scratch. In fact, if we look at BuzzFeed's channel, we can see that they've actually been making these cheap versus expensive videos more than seven years ago. And I love this example because so many people think that in order to blow up on YouTube, you need to be unique, you need to be original. And one of the reasons for that is there's a lot of dumb YouTube gurus out there who actually don't know how to grow a channel. And so it's a lot easier for them to just tell you, be unique, be original, because uniqueness or originality can't be taught. And therefore it gets the YouTube gurus off the hook and puts the ball in your court. But what Mr. Beast understands is that often you don't need to reinvent the wheel to succeed on YouTube. And so the best creators are constantly taking inspiration from other channels. Now, am I saying that you should just blatantly copy any video that you see that does well? Not quite, because if you just blatantly copy someone else, there's no reason for people to watch your content over that original video that you copied. So what you wanna do instead is copy formats. For example, let's take a look at this video, the history of the entire world, I guess. This is one of the OG YouTube classics that went mega viral. Now, if you were just to copy this video and remake it word for word, essentially, you wouldn't get many views. But if you take the format, like these videos, we have one on Minecraft, we have one in the United States, we have one on the Premier League, we have one on Fortnite, and so much more. And so clearly finding great video ideas that has been proven in the past to go viral is a good way for you to go viral in the future. And here's probably one of my favorite ways to do that. First, you'd wanna to go to a website called Velio. I'll link this in the description. Once you've signed up, you'll end up on a page that looks like this. And what you wanna do, go up to the search bar and then type in a broad term that encapsulates the niche you're creating content in. So example, if we were a football channel, we could go sport. Or if we were an Overwatch channel, we could go gaming or just Overwatch in general. Or if we were a survival channel, we could go outdoors or camping. You get the idea. Now, once you've done that, you wanna click up on this filters button here, and then you're going to come across and change this outlier score to 2.5X. We're gonna to come to subscriber count here, and we're gonna decrease this to about 100K. And then we're gonna to come to view count. We're gonna increase this to 250K. And we're gonna hit apply on those. Now what's going to happen is that Velio is going to filter YouTube and only show us videos from channels that have less than 100,000 subscribers that have gotten over 250,000 views and there are 2.5X outliers. In other words, these videos are drastic outperformers. So they're the perfect format for you to model on your own channel. We could take this video. What you want to do is identify the specific variables here. So for example, like football, et cetera, et cetera, and replace them with something that is different and relevant to your niche. So let's say we're doing a basketball channel, you would swap out football for basketball and then you would create a thumbnail that looks more like this. And I guarantee you a video like this is gonna be so much more likely to go viral because it is based 
on real data and a real case study that has gone viral in the past than if you tried to just come up with viral ideas off the top of your head. Now, I actually built Velio myself. So if you guys use the link down below, not only will you be supporting this channel, but you can get your first month for just $1, which is a pretty insane discount. So feel free to check out that link down below. But regardless of whether you do or don't use Velio, the principle here is the same. Video ideas play a huge role in whether or not your video goes viral. And it's much more practical to find formats that have already gone viral that you can model than it is to do what most people do, which is just create whatever videos they think are gonna do well. But there's another thing I wish I had known when it comes to finding viral video ideas. So for example, would you click on this video? Well, unless you're planning on cooking a steak, probably not, right? But what if we were to take this thumbnail and video and transform it into something that everyone would wanna click on regardless of whether or not they are planning on cooking a steak tonight. So for example, we have this video, $1 versus $10,000 steak. Suddenly this video is more appealing because you don't need to be cooking a steak tonight to want to click on this video. Or what about this video? We have 50 ways to cook a steak. We have some open loop questions here. We're like, is he cooking a steak with a laser? Also, what are the 50 ways of cooking a steak? In other words, these two videos have a much broader appeal than this video. Now that's not saying that this video is bad, but it is saying that this video is probably going to hit a ceiling and cap out sooner than these ones. But that leads us to our next step. I wanna share this quick story. So a while back, I went to China. Really awesome place, love the trip. But something I've noticed is that China seems very disconnected from the rest of the world. I'd walk into a grocery store and a lot of these household name brands in China are brands that I've never even heard of in my life. And so I want you to imagine that you're in China right now. You're in a grocery store and you're wanting to buy bread. And you notice two brands of bread out there. Brand A is actually the higher quality and better tasting bread, but you don't know that because you've never tried it before. But the packaging is really ugly. Like on the outside, it looks terrible. And then we have Brand A's competitor. Let's call him Brand B. Now Brand B's bread tastes like the biggest piece of dog shit, but the packaging looks nice. Which bread do you think you're gonna buy? Because you haven't experienced either of these brands products before, you're probably just gonna pick the one with packaging that stands out to you the most, which is brand B. Even though brand B's product is actually so much worse than brand A. And it's the same on YouTube. You can have a video that is much better than other people's videos, but if it doesn't have attractive clickable packaging, doesn't matter. No one is ever going to give your video a chance. So how can you create viral clickable packaging? Well, the two big elements are your title and thumbnail and I would argue that the thumbnail is probably the most important element. So let's focus on that one for a bit. Something I've noticed is that the majority of viral thumbnails tend to have at least three elements present. For example, let's take a look at this thumbnail right here. Would you say this is a good thumbnail or a bad thumbnail? The lighting is terrible. The image quality is terrible. Heck, this doesn't even look like it was edited. It looks like it was just a frame taken directly from the video. So with such a bad thumbnail, how many views do you think this video got? Well, it actually got over 15 million. So why am I showing you this? Well, a lot of people seem to equate design quality with thumbnail quality, i.e. if a thumbnail looks bright and pretty, a lot of people think it's a good thumbnail. But I would say design quality only really accounts for maybe like 15 to 20% of a thumbnail's actual success. The real magic and actually good thumbnail focuses far more on psychology than it does design. So this thumbnail, for example, it tells a story. We can see, even though the actual design quality looks terrible, there's clearly a dude hanging from the ceiling. And so you're wondering, like, how the heck has he gotten up there? How does he get down? How are the other customers and staff reacting? And so it's causing our viewers to have a bunch of open loop questions in their minds that can only be answered by clicking on the video. And last but not least, let's talk about one final element that will help you create better thumbnails. See, a lot of my students come to me and they're like, Marcus, is this thumbnail eye-catching? Is this clickable? And it's really hard for me to answer that question for them because clickable or eye-catching is relative to what you're trying to stand out from. Because remember, you're not just trying to create a clickable thumbnail, you're trying to create a thumbnail that is more clickable than all of the other options viewers see when they're scrolling through YouTube. And this is where the design element of a thumbnail actually can come into play. So for example, if we look at a thumbnail like Mr. Beast, this car one, right? We can see that the colors in these thumbnails contrast very significantly meaning it's very easy to identify the different elements in this thumbnail because they don't all blend together. And this isn't just an accident. So the practical tip here to make your thumbnail stand out more is go to Google. I want you to type in Canva color wheel. Now I'm gonna click on the top link and you'll end up on a website that looks like this. So now if we go back to this Mr. Beast thumbnail, let's have a look at the color choice. For the ocean, he has this bluish color. And notice what happens on this color wheel here. If we select like a bluish color, you can see the yellowy color, kind of like the same color as this car, is on the opposite side of this color wheel. 
meaning that blue and yellow tend to contrast quite well and stand out next to each other, which is exactly why Mr. Beast has chosen these colors for his thumbnail. So when you're designing your next thumbnail, make sure that everything in the thumbnail is easy to see. And if your thumbnail lends itself to a more highly edited style, use contrasting colors to make sure everything stands out. But now we need to move on to our next point because even with a highly clickable thumbnail, you'll get a bunch of people to click, but if they don't stick around and watch your video, you could have some problems. So now that we have a good niche, good video ideas, good packaging, we need an intro that really grabs people, it hooks people. That's why we call it a hook usually. Now you've probably heard about hooks before, but maybe you have questions like how long should your hook be? Should you intro your video or should you just jump straight into the content? Should you try and dangle a carrot to keep people watching your video all the way to the end? Well, you can look at hundreds of viral videos across YouTube and you'll probably find some of them have long hooks, some of them have short hooks, some dangle a carrot to try and get you to watch all the way to the end, some start a story, some jump straight into the content, some intro the content. So long story short, there isn't just one way to create a great hook, but to make this as practical as I can for you, I wanna give you a formula that can work quite well. And this three step hook writing process comes from a guy called George Blackman. He's written scripts for Ali Abdal, and I think he condensed this really well. And let's look at two variations of this hook, one for an entertainment video and one for an education video. So for an educational video, you wanna do something like this. First, you wanna call out who your target audience is, who this video is for. Then you wanna call out what their desired transformation is, i.e. the place they wanna be as a result of learning what it is that you're teaching them in your video. Then you wanna up the ante a bit by highlighting what's at stake if they don't learn what you're about to teach them and achieve their desired transformation. So let's give them an example. Here's a hook from my 21 YouTube settings video. Here are 20 YouTube settings that can f small YouTube channels, <laughs> meaning you get no views. So even though this sentence is very short, it actually includes all of the elements we just talked about. So I call out my target audience who are small YouTube channels. I imply the transformation, which is essentially these 20 YouTube settings that they might've set wrong, that if they don't watch this video all the way to the end, they're not gonna know what they are and they're not gonna achieve their desired transformation. And then the stakes are them going from getting no views to getting lots of views. Now let's look at the entertainment style hook. So for an entertainment video, first you can introduce the characters in the video, then introduce the concept of the video, and finally introduce what's at stake. We're basically just telling our audience Audience, here's what you're gonna experience in this video and here's why it matters. Now an example for an entertainment video might work slightly differently. So let's look at Mr. Beast's World's Most Dangerous Trap video. It opens like this. It says, I built a giant death trap, which is just one of many traps we built. And for every trap this contestant survives, he wins $100,000. But if he fails one, he loses everything. So what we can see here is Mr. Beast introduces the characters, which are himself and this contestant. The concept of the video is explained and also the stakes of the video are revealed. But now that we've hopefully hooked our viewers, we can move on to the next point in this formula, which is actually keeping them watching. So if we go back to the Mr. Beast example I just gave you, you can see that he does this really well. Firstly, after the opening 10 seconds of this video, the viewer already knows what they wanna stick around for. We wanna see how much money this contestant is gonna make from the challenge, which isn't revealed until the end of the video. And so we have to watch the video all the way to the end. But then throughout the video, Mr. Beast has 10 interesting challenges and lots of little micro hooks within his video that make you want to actually watch the video and experience this contestant's story rather than just skipping to the end to see whether or not he got the money. So for example, at 1 minute 28 of the video, this line plays. In these duffel bags is 200 grand in cash. All you have to do to win it is press that red button and go back through this door. What happens when I press a button? Just press it and find out. Now notice Mr. Beast isn't revealing up front what's actually about to happen. By keeping us uncertain of what's gonna happen next, he's building suspense and keeping us intrigued. In other words, he's building up mini micro stories within his overall video story that makes us wanna watch every single second. And this works for educational or entertainment videos. So I used to make this mistake all the time back in the day. What I would do is I would talk about a certain concept. So I might be like, today I'm gonna teach you how to create a great YouTube video. And then I'd be like, step one, you need to have a great video idea. And then I would explain why you you need to have a great video idea. Problem with that is that as soon as people have heard, you need to have a great video idea, they're like, okay, I already know what this point is about, even if they don't. And so then they skip to the next point in the video. And so you're not getting as much watch time as you could have. And so what I should have done instead is swap the order of these two things. I would first explain why you need to have a good video idea and then summarize that point at the end by being like, okay. And so that's why having a great video idea is essential to succeeding on YouTube. It actually also makes the video more engaging for the viewer themselves because no one really likes being told what to do. <laughs> 
They like coming to their own conclusions. And if you lead a viewer step by step through how you came to the conclusion it is that you're trying to illustrate to them, they're going to feel kind of like they went on that journey with you and they came to that conclusion themselves. And so it feels less like a lecture from the hilltops. So in summary, give some context first and then provide the payoff rather than giving the payoff first and then providing context. And that leads us to the next step in this YouTube framework. So once we've got people to watch all the way to the end, what if we can then take that view and multiply it into two, three, four, or even five more views? Well, this is a sneaky trick a lot of big YouTubers use and it only takes a few minutes to implement. So let me show you. So think back to the last time you watched a TV series. It's late at night. You've promised yourself this is the last episode and then I'm going to bed. And then that episode ends on a cliffhanger and you have to know what happens next. So you go and click on the other video and then you end up only getting four hours sleep and hating yourself in the morning. Well, you want to try and set up your YouTube channel in the same way. What you want to do is add these things called end screen to the end of your video and then try to get people to binge watch multiple of your videos in a row. And again, to keep things practical, here's a framework for how you can do that. So first, never let YouTube select the video to recommend to the next video. You want to select the video that's going to get promoted in your end screen because you want to structure your script so that it actively promotes that video. And here's a formula you can use to do that. Now, the first step in this formula is you want to sort of hide the fact that your video is actually ending. So at the end of your video, avoid saying things like, so guys, that's it. Or being like, all right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Or so please like and subscribe. These are trigger phrases that sub communicate to the viewer. Hey, video's over. Get the fuck out. Here. So what you want to do instead of ending your video is sort of start a new segment in your video or make it feel like you're starting a new segment and reference back to something that you've already discussed in your video. So let's say you're a boxing channel and earlier in the video, you talked about the importance of using a jab to set up your punches. Instead of being like, so guys, thanks for watching. That's the end of your video. You can say something like, so earlier I mentioned the importance of using a jab to set up your punches. Then what you want to do is sort of highlight a new related problem to the thing you just mentioned. So you can say like earlier I mentioned the importance of using a jab to set up your punches but without good footwork you're probably going to struggle to close distance on your opponents here and then what you're going to do is just promote a video that solves this new problem that you just brought up and so you could say something like so before you go out and start using this jab technique I've just shown you watch the video on screen it's going to give you some footwork drills that will help you close your distance your movement speed and let you pull this off every time and there you go you've linked the current video they're watching to a new video you want them to watch you've sort of highlighted another problem that's related to the thing they're already trying to solve, but they haven't yet solved. And you provided the solution to that problem in the form of a new video of yours that you want them to click on. And doing this in all of your videos is going to result in you generating more overall views for your channel. So for example, on this channel you're watching right now, I get 1.6 views per viewer. That means that for every 100 unique viewers I bring to this channel, I end up getting 160 views because a bunch of you guys then go on to binge a bunch of my other videos. And obviously this is an educational channel, but you can also do this for entertainment based channels. Instead of bringing up a problem, you want to tease a new story or adventure that's related to the one they just experienced. And then you plug the video that shares that experience there. So let's say you're a vlogging travel channel and you've made a video about this dangerous experience you had in Cambodia. So you could say something like, I feel lucky to have made it out of Cambodia alive, but then I went to Thailand and you won't believe what happened. So check out the video on screen to see how I survived a near death experience with an elephant or something like that. And so once we've got viewers caught up into this feedback loop and we're getting multiple views per viewer, we want to move on to our final point in this framework, step seven. But before that, we've gone over a lot today. So let's quickly summarize everything we've gone over. First, we talked about picking a niche. Successful channels like Lambo Leo focus on a single topic, which helps the algorithm know who to show their videos to, which makes it easier for the right people to find their videos and the algorithm to sort of scale their videos up. And to make sure you're in a niche, use the litmus test question every time you create a new video. Ask yourself, is this video going to attract people who would want to watch all of the other videos on my channel? If the answer is no, you're probably not niche enough. We then talked about video ideas, how you want to draw inspiration from other outliers. And you can use a tool like Velio to instantly find these outliers. And you can try Velio for just $1 down below. We then talked about getting people to actually click on your videos. Specifically, we talked about your thumbnail. We talked about focusing on actually telling a story and the psychological intrigue of your thumbnail over the actual design and how that's more important than the design component of your thumbnail. But we also talked about how when you are designing your thumbnail, use contrasting elements
colored so people can actually easily distinguish what's going on. And we talked about using Canva colors to identify what colors contrast the most. We then talked about hooking your viewers and I gave you some formulas to follow that help with that. And then we talked about structuring your content for retention. So some ways to keep people watching throughout your entire video, even after your hook. We then talked about extending session time, making your channel as bingeable as possible using end screens and a simple three-step script formula at the end of your videos. And so I'm going to follow my own advice while being an absolute tease and say, if you want to learn one final yet very practical, very actionable and very impactful way to get more views, click the video on screen and I'll walk you through it step by step. So check it out.